Yo, what's going on? My buddy Keith Marsh is in town from Ohio. He's driving through and uh, stopped in Charleston. We got to grab some coffee. He's a senior partner with Specialized Trust Services, which is a financial uh, custodian for self-directed retirement accounts. If you are not familiar with self-directed retirement accounts, this conversation will blow your mind. And even if you are familiar with it, we're gonna dive deep into some different things that you can do for your kids, some different strategies that we've seen uh, with self-directed retirement accounts. This is gonna be an amazing episode about building legacy wealth. So check it out. What's up, buddy? How much? How you doing? Dude, man, good to see you. Cheers. Good to see you too. Cheers. Good to grab some coffee. So what are you doing in, uh, in Charleston? Taking the family. We made the trip up from Florida. You know, enjoyed the nice weather there and uh, realized Have you been that... down there since the mastermind? I have, I have, yeah. We were about two months. That's awesome. About two months, a little before. So it's, uh... So how's, so you got, you got the business, you got the IRA company, allowing you to travel from anywhere in the world. I do, I do. Um, I know, uh, I know obviously we're kind of recording this, so. Give me kind of a high level on what your business is looking like, kind of how you guys got rolling in uh, in the IRA business. Oh my God, I've been doing it since the uh, early 2000s. A specialized trust company. We uh, were a custodian for self-directed IRAs. Yep. Uh, people want to hold real estate, hard assets, alternative. Uh, we specialize basically in everything other than stocks, bonds, mutual funds. So you want to buy an apartment complex, you want to buy a single family home, anything like that, you can use your IRA funds. That's what kind of what we do. All right. Been doing it for years. Back up for a second. All right, so everybody that I kind of create content for, really like we fall in a few buckets. One is entrepreneurship, another one's kind of lifestyle design, a lot of real estate obviously. And then there's a, there's a bucket of just wealth building, right? Just wealth strategies and assets versus liabilities and all that kind of stuff. So I think this is uh, the entire IRA or, or, or uh, um, self-directed retirement account world is like mind boggling to a lot of people, especially people who are not necessarily in real estate. And even for people that are in real estate, they don't understand the capabilities of, of what that looks like. So on a third grade level, explain to me, you know, if you sit down with somebody who, who has never heard of self-directed IRAs, how do you explain it to them in a, in a very elementary uh, way? Oh my God, it's super easy. And it's got to fit for every one of those things you mentioned. That was a good point, Tim. Somebody that doesn't have a clue often has a retirement account. Mm -hmm. They have. 50, 100, 200, 300 plus, sitting in a retirement account, 401k, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. They're talking to you or talking to somebody about doing a deal. It's always their personal funds. Mm -hmm. Not, they have all of this. They're like, they ah, I only got 80 grand set yeah. aside. I have 100 grand set aside. I can only borrow aside. X, I can yeah. borrow Z. But they're not talking about their, their retirement account, their 401k that they've been piling money into for the for the past 30 years, and that's, that's sitting at several hundred thousand dollars. Yeah that can be used to either lend money or invest passively into different projects or invest actively into different projects. The right? most simplest way I can put it is they're sitting at a table having a conversation where they might need 25, 50, 100, 150, 200, and it's sitting in an account that they had no clue they could use, mm -hmm. no clue they could put into play. And I mean, that's the most basic level of it. And then when you tell them the other parts to it, what it can do, what it can, what it can do to the return mm -hmm. when you look at it personally and then that, they, they usually are, so Are you, you kidding me? <laughs> so you can use you can use both 401k funds or IRA funds, um, and there's there's multiple other ones. There's a covered L educational there savings is, yeah, account. There's um, there's a whole bunch of other. Or the, you can use HSA, right? You can. You, you can self direct you know, the, an HSA. There's a whole bunch of stuff. You can yeah, use. you can use. The, I think the biggest thing people get confused with is is the is that it's some different thing. And I don't want to minimize it. And now I'm going to confuse everybody more, and they're going to think, well, is it not? Yeah. Look, it's. 401k, Roth, traditional, CETAs, HSAs, those are the same accounts at any anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can, with ours, with what we have here, they're self-directed. You can take the funds that are in those accounts and you can do them in deals that you're probably talking at at the table with people, everyday deals, yeah. where normally they think they could just buy a Microsoft stock, you know, so, or something like that. Right. So, so typically everybody thinks they can only throw it into a hedge fund or mutual fund of some sort. And what they can really do is they can self-direct it. So they can actually say, I don't want to put it into that. Well, they could. They could still invest in that they could, stock. They could. They, they could invest in a different mutual fund. They don't they have could. to follow whatever their financial advisor says. But they can take it and they can do alternative assets as well, which yes. your financial advisor typically doesn't tell you that you're allowed to do because it takes the money away from them. And then they're not making fees on, on your money, right? Right. Very big thing. So instead, you can take the fees, put it within uh, an administrative uh, or administrator like you guys, correct? 
And, and then you guys do not tell them what to invest in. You guys do not direct the investments. It is 100% up to whoever the account holder is, right? Yeah, correct. And then correct. they can take that and say, hey, I wanna lend money to Joe Real Estate Investor. He's out here flipping this house and, I have, and he needs $150,000. I'm gonna lend him the money at 15% interest rate. He's gonna pay it back to me in six months. And then that money goes back into that account either tax-free or tax-deferred, yes. depending on if it's a Roth component or a or a traditional 401k type component, That's right? It. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, it, in, they can, you know, they can use whatever money, whatever account they have, and it goes in. And a lot of people are like, but I can only put $6,000 in. They don't even realize that that money that they might earn on that yeah. investment is, is, is goes completely into the account, in addition to whatever contribution they want to make. Yeah. It's, it, there's no limit on your income. So, you know, some deals are home runs, some are okay, whatever it is, there's no limit. It goes back in tax-free, tax-deferred, pretty powerful. What if, so can somebody utilize that account though if they're with a corporate, if they're with a company still? Potentially, and we have a whole team set up that can kind of walk through, um, you know, some, whether they can or not. There's, there's, a, there's a couple ways the plan could have been set up at yeah. their firm and a couple uh, tricks that we may be able to do to get the money out. That's obviously a number one goal because that's just money sitting there that they probably want to use. Yep. They're usually not happy with where that, but what we hear over and over is they're just not happy with that. They want to put it in, you know, I hate to use the alt word alternative investment. It sounds like some real foreign thing, but they, you know, 80% of the people we have, they want to get in some sort of real estate. And then yeah. there's the 20% of assets, everything man. else. It's a fixed asset. I mean, dude, you can only it print is. so much money and think that yeah. <laughs> your money's going to still be worth something in the future, but unless it's you know, attached to some sort of a fixed asset that can ride the wave of appreciation and, and inflation with you can, it. You can influence, you can control, you know why typically your fixed assets making money. Yeah. And, and these guys will say, hey, I've done well, they'll say some of them, but I have no idea how, and, and it goes up and down and it scares me. And they, you know, they, whether they take the whole account or a portion of it, you know, some people are like, hey, I want to divorce, diversify, you know, mm -hmm. 400,000 of their $600,000 account or 25 of their 100, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. You, know, you can do that. You, know, you don't have to do the whole thing, but but a lot of them, you know, will find that they. Uh, we see a big push. I mean, we have put more, more deposits on. It's really weird because you know you hear the economy; it's all crazy. We have put more deposits on, in market value and cash in in this craziness during COVID and after than than, than we probably ever have. Really? Yeah. And the, and and before I was saying that for like the real estate crash days and the 08s or whatever, and you know, and we put we put good on because people are still doing deals. Look, like whether they're buying. It at a, a low price, high price, whether it's you know, I mean, there's there's always there's always just a different way they're doing a deal, yeah. And um, it's also the the best way. I you know, a lot of people don't touch on this, but you know, I'm, I'm biased, but uh, I've had family members that have done it, and it have been, you know, subject to the uh, the misfortunes of the market, you know. And the misfortune is, is tomorrow you may need to retire, and the market's down. Yeah. What well, what what do you do? And you have a small amount of money. It doesn't allow you to live the lifestyle you want. You know, we've talked about lifestyle. Everybody, entrepreneurs. That's why we're such a fit for everybody. Everybody wants the same thing usually. Yeah. See the freedom lifestyle. This, uh, these accounts is also a, a sure way that somebody with a modest amount or a low amount of money can actually get a, a rate of return. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it's we see it every day. And um, yeah, I mean, you, you, know. you don't need like there's. I mean, there, there's many ways to invest. Like you yeah. can go and buy a house with your IRA. You can. And then all the rents that come in to that account go into your straight, straight into your IRA. When right. you sell it for a profit, all the capital gains goes into the IRA, right. and it's it's either deferred or it's tax free, depending on if it's a Roth component or not, right? Yep. So like you can go out and buy property yourself. You can then lend money, also to active operators, and just be a passive investor in that. Lend money to them, let them pay you a return. You can be an equity investor into different projects as well. I have a whole bunch of IRA and 401k investors who have yeah. invested as equity investors in a bunch of my apartment buildings. Um, and then you also have the opportunity to, um, well, debt investments, equity investments, uh, loans. That's it's a real challenge. I mean, there's, there's very few things you can't do. Right. I mean, it's very, very small. The list is very small. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, that you can't do. And, that, and again, I go back, that's what we have a whole team that kind of walks them through. Um, and helps them make sure that they're a number doing something that you know they can actually do, which I said like most of the time we, we very rarely come across something somebody can't do, mm -hmm. you know. And it's and I mean it's it's very rare. I yeah. mean it's and so it's kind of whatever investment that they're envisioning or they want to do, you know, they can do with this money. Mm -hmm. And then whatever rate of return they're making. The cool thing about this is you know I like to say and maybe we need to map it out, but I always like to say the rate of the return. Imagine they're doing this with a Roth, you know, whatever tax bracket they're in, they've just bumped their rate of return. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, let's pretend they're in the 30% tax bracket. I mean, whatever earnings they make are now not subject typically to that tax. It's tax-free. 
So what I mean, take the rate the rate of return just went up. You yeah. know, it's just it's just fantastic. And, and and I don't remember what my point was was uh, to your point is you don't need a ton of money in your account to go out and, and lend on deals. Like you can either lend a little bit, you can lend somebody the money for a down payment or the earnest money on a deal, get paid back. Or if you're an active investor, you can actually take uh, five grand, two grand, five hundred bucks, and and put it down as a contract. Right, and then wholesale the contract. The entire assignment fee goes back into your IRA or 401k, and it's a way that I mean, shit. If you're special, if you're looking at apartment buildings, you can take that money and uh, put down five thousand dollars. If you if you open up the account this year, open up an account, fund it with six grand. I think is the is what you can do, right? And then. Um, Put that as a down payment or an earnest money deposit on a contract. Wholesale the contract for six figures, and then make a hundred thousand dollar fee on your IRA, and then all of a sudden now you got a hundred six thousand dollars in your account. It's like, where else can you do that? And it's tax free and it's tax deferred. And it's like, or, or deferred. Yeah. And you can even, you know, a lot of people forget this too. They're like, oh, well, you know, I don't have a, a you know, it's a small amount, and, and that's the worst thing. Like, ignore that part. Because guess what? That conversation ten years from now is the same conversation. Oh, it's a small amount. Yeah. And you know we I, we'll we'll get to the the whole cool thing with the youth things. But your child at eighteen can have pretty close to a two hundred k account. We'll break our calculator out at a zero percent rate of return yeah. just simply by taking a simple action mm -hmm. that most people don't take because they're like, what am I going to do with it? Yep. Well, what would they do with two hundred thousand at eighteen? Yep. What would the parents do to help them with that? Yeah. But um, we'll, you, you can partner. We'll, we should talk about that. That's yeah. a good thing with small accounts. Yeah, so, so explain, what, what, give me some examples of some partnerships that you guys have seen where, uh, where you joint venture on a deal with something. Well, I'll tell you two things. This partnership goes as two ways. You know, one, a lot of people with small amounts, they can partner personally and with their account to do a deal. So let's say you have you know, $10,000 in your account mm -hmm. and you have 90000 personally. You can go together on a $100,000 deal. Your account owns 10%, you own 90. Does it the, have to be proportionate to how much the, money goes in? The profits go back accordingly, yeah. And we do get that question a lot because, because the clients will, will pick up on it. They're like, oh, wait a minute, so I can then move it back to your Roth? Yeah. No, that's, that's a sure way to make the IRS knock at your door yeah, yeah, for yeah. that one. But, but, uh, but, but if, you, if you're investing not with yourself, if you invest in another deal with somebody else, you could negotiate more of the equity going to... Whatever deal you put together yeah, it's whatever, I mean, right. is... is, is, is you know, there's probably gray areas and somebody will probably construct something that, you know, they would, and, and we have a team, look, if it's straightforward, we're able to, you know, we're able to yeah. help. If it gets to be a gray area, we're like here for a couple hundred bucks, you can get that answer. Yeah. You know, and we can send them to an attorney or CPA yeah. for that just to bless the structure. But yeah. but again, it's very rare that you can't do it. I mean, if it's a deal you structure, um, usually, you know, you can do it. Dude, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty it, powerful. It's super powerful. And so, most of the deals aren't that complicated, actually. Even it's pretty straightforward deals usually, where everybody's doing. It. Let's go. Let's go back to the. Uh, yeah, I mean, most most of the stuff is pretty. It's pretty. I mean, if you're familiar with real estate investing, or you 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 work with somebody who's familiar with real estate investing, I mean, to you and me, we've seen so many different deal structures, so it probably seems like basic it's elementary, us. right? <laughs> but it's probably like mind-boggling that you could wholesale in your IRA account, you know. Somebody People are else. just so shocked and happy that it takes a moment to absorb that. Yeah. And it's like boom, like you got to get right. them like back in, like how you know. So let's talk about let's talk about going back to the kids, funding your kids' IRA, opening up an IRA for your kids. Now, in order to do that, your kid needs earned income, right? Correct. Correct. How do you pay? A, a one-year-old earned income, a two-year-old earned income. How do you do that? Well, I mean, or how have you seen clients do that? You know, we've seen in, in we've seen various. Uh, you know, they hire the kids. The kids have done uh, modeling or, or contract, you know, work. Um, we got we deal with so a lot of entrepreneurs. You put them on your your direct mail pieces. You, like if your kids there and your. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly what. I mean, your kid has to just earn an income. It could be anything right. that they can legally earn income. So as a parent, I mean, like, what would an infant earn income with? Well, you know, look on, when you watch TV and you see all those infant pictures on TV, yeah. those infants are getting paid for that marketing. Yeah. They have earned income. Those infants could make a contribution. It's that simple. So, you know, and you don't have to pay your 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 six-month-old $100,000 a year. Yeah. That's, I mean, you just pay, to, pay them a re reasonable amount. Well, you pay them $6,000, their tax bracket is yep. below a certain amount, so there's zero, or I think they pay, what, 10% taxes or something. Exactly. And then um, you pay them $7,000, they pay 10% to taxes. The, the other six grand can go straight into an IRA, a Roth IRA, and then all of a sudden, you do that for 20 years in a row, and you're looking at over a hundred thousand know? dollars. Yeah. And on the low incomes, it's 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 pretty close to a wash. What they even their tax liability is, like mm -hmm. you said. I mean, it's so low, you know. Um, but yeah, they can do that. And they put it in. And and if you look, I mean, there are most adults 
you know, that are in their mid-20s don't have a, fun, a fully funded, well, a funded Roth account. You know, they're starting late. If you just run the calculations, I, you know, I ran the calculation for my daughter. I ran it at zero. I said, what would happen? You know, because I'm like, what? You got the yeah. newborn, right? Yeah, I got the newborn. You know, she's seven months. Was seven months as of the 11th. And I, I started running the calculation. And I said, what would it, you know, what would it be? I didn't have an investment in mind yet, you know, which is hilarious because that's our world. But I'm like yeah. so busy on my own stuff. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what she's going to invest in. But I know she needs a Roth account. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, do I put this off? And I was just playing around one day. I was like, what would happen if you make this rate of return? This, you know, you play with those numbers and you, you light your calculator on fire. Yep. I, I, what I was shocked by, and, and it really motivated me to, to kind of start with the program, I was shocked when I ran the number at a zero rate of return. That's horrible. Everybody just got off the, yeah. it's not listening to us anymore. Yeah. When we said zero, it's horrible. Zero return. Yeah, zero return. And so I said, what would it look like with just contributions? And it was, it was astronomical yeah. by the time they're age 18, 20. It literally put them in the top 1% of the United States with a zero rate of return. Mm -hmm. So I sat there and I said, wow, financial education. I mean, we went down that whole route in my brain. I mean, it's going off like 200 mile an hour, which is my big problem too. When you all, everybody knows that. They know me. <laughs> everybody knows that. You know. That's all of us. Man. Yeah, we, we, all, we all got, brain goes faster. You got to slow me down. But um, I sat there and I said, wow. I mean, you can, you literally are set. You know, that child is set, you yeah. know, with a zero rate of return. I don't think it's, you got to work hard for zero. You know, I mean, it's really hard to get a zero rate of return. So I'm, I'm being super conservative there. And when you when you run is those that, up, is that because I mean, because obviously contributions are six thousand dollars right yeah, now. Yeah, I just did six thousand times. But times times twenty is one hundred twenty thousand dollars, right? Yeah, that's why I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And then I just started playing. What if they got one point five percent? What if yeah, yeah. what if they got four percent? Because you can take any amount and put it into a CD, yeah. certificate of deposit with okay. the bank. You could take any amount and put it into stocks you can put any amount into a market i mean like even if you're not comfortable with uh you know, you know you got self-limiting beliefs of hey i can't put you know uh, i can't do anything with five grand or i can't do anything with 15 grand you can still put that somewhere you can put it into a money market account and still earn one and a half two percent on it and just until you go and find that wholesale deal until you find that partnership deal until you find that that private loan that you can give on somebody's earnest money or whatever it ends up being in order to have that opportunity, but you can leave that still earning a deposit or earning a return in, in one of these accounts you can, where it doesn't even just need to sit there not earning a return. And that's just one type of account. I mean, a CISA account, super small contribution amount, still valuable. It was that two grand a Yeah, year? it's a little over two grand or something like that, you know, and I, and I stay, but when you add, if you add that up, you know, and remember these accounts can all partner to do deals. So maybe you have 60,000 here, 30,000 here. Maybe you have an account. You can go in on a deal with these individuals. And with each one of the accounts. And yeah, you can go on in on the deals with your kids' accounts, right? Yeah. So, like, I know we, we're good buddies with Mark Evans, right? Yep. And um, he's always doing deals with his son's account, his daughter's account, his account, his wife's account. Put it, all putting money together. Yeah, he really does. And yeah. then, yeah, and then, you know, all the returns come back proportionately to everybody. And he's growing these accounts um, considerably. So, here's the thing. For me... This is, this is a real, like I have an account with you guys. I have a CISA for my daughter with you guys. And I have um, uh, a Roth, I think I have a Roth account. And my mom, I think, has a small Roth account as well that I yeah. funded a few years ago. And so um, here's, I, I've never done, I'm an active investor. And I've never done anything with it, right? Like, what, what is the difference that you find in people who are growing their accounts versus not growing their accounts, who are out there doing deals? And even me, like, I'm, I'm a you know, pot calling the kettle black kind of a thing of saying, hey, you should go out and do this, and I'm not doing it myself to the level that I should be doing it. What do you find, like, how intentional are the people and the investors that are going out and doing this? Um, is, do they have a strategy in mind? How are they maintaining the, the intentional uh, mentality to go out and, and direct this money? I think uh, I think it's, it's, it's just a focus in the groups. You know, there's, there, you know there's, a, there's a group of investors that are, that are connected that are, you know, whether they join masterminds, big networking groups, it's super important. Um, they will. We see people when they do those put to, start putting together more and more deals. I mean, I hands down see that as a huge. Um, you know, the other thing is just making time. Look, like you did it. I did the same thing. Yeah. Do you realize? Like my, my staff's gonna laugh. Like I, I wish I could give the whole story. Um, but you know, it's like if you own a cleaning company, your house is the last one to get cleaned. Mm -hmm. It's getting really close to the end of yeah, the year. Yeah. I still didn't make the contributions yeah. for myself, my wife. My daughter. I did it like, all. I did it all on December thirtieth, dude. I, I'm like, I own a custodian, and I didn't. And I'm, and I'm, I'm over here, like, and I'm like, oh my god, like people would think I'm nuts. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I lose all my credibility because I myself didn't do what I hear. I'm yeah. telling the people, yeah. you know, to do. But you know what it was? Is I, I just didn't allot the simple twenty-five minutes that it took to do that. 
I think the same thing goes, like, especially with a youth accounts, let's, let's start with those. It's just allowing a moment of time to be like, okay, what deal do I want to put them in with? Yeah. Or what do I want to find? You know, it doesn't, look. Well, I think the complication becomes like, I feel like I have to go out and do it, and I have to fill out paperwork, and I have to direct the money and do all this stuff. Like, you guys have figured out a way to kind of take that complexity and simplify it for all your clients, where like, you don't have to go and do all that garbage, because uh, I'm a busy guy, right? I got a lot of stuff going we on. We can't hold it. And the last thing that I want to deal with is like paperwork and learning new processes and like, and that's, it's just outside of my realm and outside of my focus. And when I think about how much I can make if I spend time over here versus how much if I spend time doing this paperwork, I'm like, damn it, let me just go over here and just keep on working, you know? You know you're, it does. You're, you're, you, don't, you don't know it. And then you're like, and I go, what I got to spend? You don't even know if it's, you don't know if it's going to take you five minutes or five days. Exactly. Because you don't know. And, and, and that's where we kind of bring a whole team. They kind of, we handhold, I mean, the, the clients and, and kind of take them through the process. You know, we view it, I mean, it is self-directed, but we, we kind of view it as, uh, you know, maybe we should change the name of it and not quite call it self-directed. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. What, what is the self-directed part is, is we're not going to find the investment for you and tell you to buy one, two, three Main Street. Yeah. But all the rest of it, that's what we're there to help with, you know, from yeah. the account funding to help them with the paperwork to, look, we even have it, you know, the clients sign off and say, hey, you know, whoever they're working with, we make sure, we try to get together and make sure the deal goes as smooth as possible, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just signatures for them so they can review what they need to do. And, and you know, the clients play a part in it. I mean, some are, you, and you touched on a few, like, strategy, like, you can be a, you can be a bank, you can lend, you can, you can get full active in the deal, you can, mm -hmm. you know, do all of it. And, you know, we have some clients when they start that they're very active hands-on, and we have other clients that are like, you know what, I want to, I, I just want a rate of return, but look, I, I, I'm not gonna do any of the work. Like, and, and they're comfortable, you know, really just lending on the deals, you so, know, so. So I'm thinking like, as you're talking about this, you got a lot of clients. And I'm thinking like, initially my thought is, let me go and educate a whole bunch of people on, on being able to invest their 401k and the retirement funds into self-directed accounts and then they can lend it to me. Dude, that's, that's a little bit of a, of a process of going to educate people on that. It is. Wouldn't it be easier to just kind of go to your clients and say, hey, why don't you, you're already familiar with this process, now here's the opportunity. You guys aren't allowed to do that though, right? No, we can't like outright refer, I can't, you know, right. um, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, so that's so how, do you, um, how do you meet people with all, who already have 401k and self-directed IRA accounts that you can just connect with? Are there forums? Are there meetup events? Are there like, how do you, how do you So we have a, we have a lot of, um, so we're, we're actually, you're gonna see coming up pretty soon, we're working on, you know, an event that we can do. And of course, you know, what now is it, the question is, is it, is it, is it all digital now? It'll probably, it'll always probably be both, but are we, you know, we'd love to get back to doing a big in-person event. I think people are like now they're at the point like, hey, I'd like to get together Dude. at some point. I'm doing, I'm doing live events and people, do, people right. are showing up nonstop. Yeah, they, you did they an miss amazing it. one down yeah. south, you did? So yeah, we're, uh, it's, uh, um, but we'll love to get back to that. And I think the, the digital ones are, are good, you know, from this perspective now, you know, that they go. But we're working on that to kind of get people through. And I think people are like, hey, like, you know, it's not so much um, that, you know, you're having somebody say, hey, uh, I'm, I'm doing an outright solicitation by one, two, Main Street Street. But it's like, hey, you know, what are some of the cool things Tim's doing? Mm -hmm. And have Tim, you know, and, and the clients want to know that. They're like, hey, what, what, what different deals? And then the clients, you know, do their, their own research. And yeah. they kind of look it up and look at the operators. But uh you know, it's it's really educating on some of the, the cool things that people are doing out there because they're just so used to hearing stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You know, they don't know. Or they're already working with you and they have no clue that, that they can do use their retirement money. So they're racking their head, they're stressing out how I'm gonna how I'm gonna come up with these funds to put the deal together. And here they had a couple hundred thousand sitting in an account yep. that's probably going all over the place, driving them with anxiety. And some yeah. you know, sometimes they don't even know it's there. Yeah. You know, which is another thing. Like they, they have no clue. They, I can't tell you the calls that we get where people aren't really sure on their balance, and then they're they're like, well, I didn't know I had that much there. Yeah. You know, I mean, they forget about it. It's kind yeah. of forget it and lose it. And then when they start looking at it, they're mad. They're like, well, I should have had more. What are these fees and that? Because uh -huh. you know, everybody thinks they don't pay fees. They don't understand it's coming out in various different ways, even if it says no fees. Yeah. So you know, yeah. it's oh, kind dude. of the uh, challenge. I mean, well, there's a guy in our in our group who used to work for Morgan Stanley. Just left. He raised over a billion dollars from Morgan Stanley. Yeah. Uh, One point two billion dollars of private individual money that he has raised over his 15-year career, and put it all into investments with Morgan Stanley. And um, dude, he left because he couldn't sleep at night on how they were just getting raked over the coals um, in these traditional investments, and how there's all these hidden fees and smoke and mirrors on um, the what the returns really yeah. are versus what they say that they are. And that, dude, it's it's it. it like he did an entire presentation on it, a little, like a, I don't know, a year and a, no, shoot, two years ago now, and um, it was just like 
mind-boggling. People don't realize. Zero. That's sometimes when, and I'm sure you get it in our worlds. Like our our stuff is 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 full disclosure. We don't we don't have that opportunity. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like I often say, I, I see why the the buildings are gold leaf covered inside and stuff because I'm mm -hmm. like they literally they just like for us like I, we don't do stock funds and mutual funds. Our fees, annual fee, you see it up front. It's yep. there. You know, and, and sometimes we get, I would say maybe 25% of the time, we'll get, you know, a person that's like, wow, you know, they think they've, I don't, I don't pay any fees or I'm shocked that I have to pay fees. Mm -hmm. They think that it's free. It's just, it's so, you know, and, and I don't really blame the clients. I mean, it's pretty hidden. I mean, it, you know, it looked like it's no fee sometime I, until you review it and your Morgan Stanley guy knows that. Dude, <laughs> and, and I think, I think it even, they don't even teach the, the you know, the, like the financial advisors get a bad rep. Um, as sometimes they should, but I also think they're just trained to just, you know, do the monkey dance and, and do their presentation, and they're told from higher ups exactly what it is. They, they probably don't even know any better, you know what I mean? Like, I think there's multiple layers to this of incompetency, not, not giving a shit, not paying attention to it, and like, I don't when there's so many people saying the same thing because that's what they're brainwashed to say and do and how, how all the marketing material and brochures are all printed out and, and saying, hey, you know, we like here, here's here's a mind-boggling stat, right? Whenever they, whenever you sit down with your financial advisor, what do they always tell you about? Like, uh, oh, oh, this stock or this mutual fund has averaged six percent over the past 80 years that that it's been there, okay? And so your mind is it goes towards, oh, I'm going to make six percent every single year. If I make six percent a year, here's what the return looks like, and they they give you the formula based on making 6% every single year. The difference is that's not what happens. It, they're averaging out the returns, not what actually happens to the money. And if you take a look at what actually happens to the money, if you have $100,000, let's call it a million dollars in a bank account, and it goes up by 5%, and let's say up by 10%, and then back down by 10%, or vice versa, down by 10%, and then back up by 10%, you're not back at a million dollars. You're not at break even. You're at nine hundred sixty thousand dollars because you went down. You know, or, or yeah. Um, what? Is it? Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking the the model that I always do is twenty percent. You go down by twenty percent, like it did during COVID, right? Drops by twenty percent. You're at eight hundred grand. Yeah. It goes back up by twenty percent. You're at nine sixty. Yeah. So you're actually you're like, oh, I just broke even, you know, went down by 20, but it came back up by 20, so I'm, I'm back even. No, you're $40,000 in the hole. That's 4% of your entire wealth that's in that account, in the hole. You need, yeah, I mean, Every time it goes up and down, you're losing money over and over and over and over well, it's again. It's amazing. It, it's going to make another 6%, and it's going to drop another 10%. Exactly. Oh, you only need 6%, but it, but it averaged somehow. I don't know how the calculation, and you know, it might make 15, 20 one time, but it's still down, you know. It's still down. It's Every still time down. it goes up and down, it chips away and the averages the percent averages might might average out to six percent but that's not what your actual money looks like and I don't blame people that like, it's know, closer I, to like it's it's about half of whatever they average so it's really like a three percent which means you could go out and put your money in a CD and not ride the stock market and have a better return it is better to earn a four percent fixed rate of return every single year than it is to make us I think it's seven and three quarters or, or seven and, a, and three eighths what it is is what most of these stock markets, or the S&P has averaged over the past 80 years. It's seven and three eighths of a return. But, but that's the average of the return. That's not what happened to the actual money. If you would have gotten 4% a year fixed every single year on your money, it would have yielded a better return than the volatility in the stock market over 80 years in the S&P. You know, and, we, and we, get, we get hammered, you know, because it's like, and you touched on, you know, look, like some of those people, I don't blame them a lot too, look at it this way. They have goals, quotas, and everything they're trying to meet. And look, they have, they, they're a cog in the wheel in the system, and boy, they're gonna hate me for saying that. But Well, look, dude, they don't have a fiduciary duty. How does somebody managing your money not have a friggin' fiduciary well, you know, duty to manage your money? It's a, bullshit. I have a problem with, with, the, with the Series 7, you know, with uh, what I call the, the license to learn how to sell well, um, which is completely, people are gonna kill me for saying that, but you know, it's how I feel it is, and I got a great story of my grandmother, I'll touch on that, it actually motivates me for, you know, the world of self-directing. But um, I, I don't understand how how they can scream, I can't have you do a real estate deal because it, it because they could technically be a fiduciary over that deal, but it's okay to throw them in a stock bond and mutual fund that they have no clue. I mean, they just, they're looking at numbers that are half fluff, smoke and mirrors made up. I mean, look, I, I'm not saying there's some big players out there getting like 20 multipliers, but we, you know, I don't know. I, I, I mean, can we sell our firms for that? 
No, I mean, I mean, maybe we can, and we're just not talking to the right people. But it's like, you know, it's not, it's not realistic, you know. And you got guys. I often it's say all like, speculative, dude. It is, and it's just a business. You don't build wealth by by speculation. Maybe you can get rich quick, short term. But guess what? Just as likely, you're more likely to lose everything than you are to get rich quick on this stuff. I, I, I was in my early twenties, and I, I I didn't know what I was doing. Thought I was thought I was a smart stock guy. Bought a bought a. A stock that was in the, you know, I love, everybody knows I'm a big boat fan, big marine fan, but what's something in the marine industry? I won't, I won't give it free advertising, but uh, it was, it was high and went to like a buck something. And I'm like young, dumb, and you know, Keith says, well, oh, this isn't going to go out of business. It's going to go up. Little did I know it could have went out of business. So I, I went all in with my measly, you know, fifteen, twelve thousand dollar account, and I think I was buying them for like a buck something, and it went up to, it went back up to like twenty six. So I call the brokerage, and I'm in my early 20s. Like I, I, when I, this is years ago. I probably didn't even know what a Roth account was. I knew what a 401k was. I had no idea what a Roth account was. I moved the money, and the broker says, "Man, that's an awesome trade. You know, you did great. You know, what, what, what did you do to get that trade?" And I told him, I said, "Well, I just figured it wouldn't go out of business. It was worth a lot before. It's probably going to be worth more in the future." Oh, was that just completely crazy? But you know what I said next? I said the broker didn't know how I made that money. I don't really know how I made yeah, that money. I don't know what happened. The market just blew up, went down. The company did whatever it did normally that it did, but suddenly it was like swinging. So you know what I took that money to? That's when I bought my first uh, first single family deal. Really? Was shortly after. Yeah, I bought, I bought it because you wanted, and listen, I'm a young, dumb, maybe I wasn't at the time, I guess, but I, I it was pretty basic. We're gonna, call, we're gonna take it to one-on-one. I made speculative money. I called it, I went to casino. It, mm -hmm. The machine just crapped out a ton of money. It just happened to. It yeah. just, <laughs> Luckily. It, I, I held my bucket there, and I was like, oh my God, and I'm 20, and my eyes are just exploding. I don't even know what I'm going to do with all this money. It's, you know, it's, my, it's more than my annual income at the time that I probably made. And I said, oh, hell, I, I, I'm not putting that in another stock. I don't know if I can't lose this money. So I put it in. I bought a single family property, you know, for nothing. And it, it I mean, I don't even want to, I mean, it's, it was the best deal I ever did, and it got me started in the area. And then it also showed me that what a, I mean, it was a laughable amount. People would laugh at the deal. It was a strong rate of return, class B area. I mean, we hear it all the time. Um, I, I, it was the best thing I ever did because it, it kind of let me see like, and you know, that property has only not been rented for three months the entire time I owned it since probably, oh, nine? Really? Three months. I mean, I know that's rare. It's kind of, you know, whatever, it's lucky, but it, and it's, I've, I haven't put anything into it. I mean, it's been the best thing I ever did, but that's a case in point what you could do with a small amount of money. I don't know. I couldn't, last time I checked, I can't take that small amount of money and get that kind of an annuity. Yeah. Because there's not enough. That they want all my money in fees mm -hmm. when you look at that. And so, mm -hmm. that you know, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just back. You need. I, I'm a big fan of the assets. Look, and I know, there's, you know, I know people that have bought Google at ten bucks and now they're they're super wealthy. I get that. I get that. But what about now? Like, and look, I I also know people. The wealthiest people, you know, I mean, hey, Mitt Romney's account self directed. Not right. to plug him. It's one of the largest, they say, in the, in the country. It's self-directed. Didn't get that way by stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Yeah, it's all real so estate, man. It's all, it's all, you know, it's private all. company deals. Things that are not on the exchange. Yep. You know, so yep. he has a little exchange. I'm sure he diversifies some stuff. Why not? Yep. You know, it's fair money, but, but I, you know, what I don't like about stocks, and this wasn't meant to be like a let's shit on stocks, but we kind of are. But oops, <laughs> it's all right. We still love our broker friends. Yeah. Who, by the way, self direct too. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they actually make their money, right? Exactly. Um, they go make their money in fees selling people stocks and then they come they and put it in self direct. And then self direct their incomes. Yeah. yeah. This is, you know what? Everything you were talking about, this is a this is a real life Main Street illustration of it right here. And there's no, no one can dispute it. So my grandfather had passed away. And, uh, you know, obviously you get, when somebody passes away, you get, you know, their accounts, their pet, you know, things like that, pension things. So she got a sum of money. It wasn't a ton, but it was, it was, for her and them, it was a ton. Um, she was working with a broker. My grandmother didn't know the first thing about stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And unfortunately, I feel bad, but I was probably under the age of 14. I didn't either. And I, I just remember, literally, she would speak with a broker, and they would tell her to hold it. The market's, you're in it for the, you know, the long term. She was, uh, she probably had, and I mean, I think she might have had a $150,000 account. But when I say this, this was all the money she had. Uh, probably 50 plus, over 50% of it was in stocks such as Lucent Technologies from back in the day. Oh, yeah. And it tanked, I mean, it completely, but it was on the way tanking. And the broker licensed Series 7, all of the things they said, told her to hold it. She's retirement age, she was 60. It crashed, zero, almost zero, basically zeroed out. I mean, it, it, and I think she ended up, I, I think she ended up with $20,000 in her account. She's 20 grand. What, what, I mean, like even, you know, I mean, now we're like- Going back to work. Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, I mean, honestly, the, she self-direct, 
you know, a deal, put a deal in, but it, it paid. But I mean, it. And when I saw that, I was like, there, you know, there's no, uh, there's no accountability there. There's nothing she can do. Yeah. Like there was no, there was no recourse. Like why? Like because she hired an expert who said hold it, and somebody, and that illustrates that that curve that you have. And I think that's the one thing people don't understand is that like, look, there was a period when she bought that that it went up. She wasn't in retirement. Mm -hmm. And it, luck would have it, right when she needed the money, it went down. Yeah. That wouldn't have happened if she was in a tangible asset. Hands down. It's it's one of those things where. Never would. Yeah, man. I, I mean, you, you don't ever want to like, dude, you have to take 100% ownership of your financials, right? And unfortunately, we've given so much faith and put so much um, uh, faith into the system because everybody tells us to go and put money into these brokers and into, into these traditional uh, investments and it does not take care of us, dude. Yeah. And so like, Hey, I lost money on I lost money on my, my first stock, right? Like the first stock, I put ten grand into it, sold it for nine hundred bucks, you know, within within sixty days, and it and it tanked because it was supposed to be a sure thing, it was supposed to be a get rich quick, and it was supposed to jump up in value, and it did, dude. It jumped up twenty percent in like two weeks, and then it dropped by ninety percent after that, or whatever it was. And so, I remember like, I was like, that's my fault. Right? I made that decision, and I think when you take 100% ownership of it, and you realize that you have zero control over the stock market, you can't control if Volkswagen's cheating an emissions test. You can't control if Elon Musk smokes a joint and the stock drops by 10%. Now, I mean, it's done really well since then, right? But like, and these are all true. You know, it was funny. This we would. Is, this is all true things. Like all yeah. these things we're talking about actually happen. I know. It's I crazy. Know, dude, I know. It's, like, it's, it's, it's like, almost like you think dude, we're in a movie, but like, it's dude, not. Like the whole me, <laughs> the whole Me Too movement of all these like yeah. CEOs and COOs and all these people who, um, you know, got got plucked out of the, the the executive level of their of their company and the stocks got adversely. Dude, I had nothing to do with that. Why am I financially uh, uh, taking it on the chin because somebody else, you know, shit the bed on their job? And so that's to me. I don't have control over that. I can control my real estate investments. I can control the loans that I make. I can control the underwriting on all these different projects, and I don't have to rely on somebody else. You run right? a business, like, right? Don't laugh. It's yeah. a serious question. We all run businesses, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and our personal finances are kind of a business, but 90% we don't really treat it like that. And what I mean is, you know, why is the traditional world allowed to sell, and why, and why is it accepted that you run that not like a business? So if you and I take our assets, we have a balance sheet and a P&L, mm -hmm. why is it okay and I'm doing good when number one, I don't have cash in the bank? Yeah. So I own that stock, right? I own 100,000 of that stock, right? I, my stock went up, right? No. Did my bank account cash value go up? No. I have to sell the stock to get the cash, right? Do I actually have any money? Now I put, I put a, an asset in there, so I put 100,000, it's the same as the stock. Let's be fair to the stock, it's still mm -hmm. a stock, right? The asset appreciates. Do I have the appreciation in there? No, I gotta sell it, right? But the incomes that spin in are actually in my cash account. So what about what is my right. balance sheet? Now this is where I go back to this is the trick question on a business. Why don't why doesn't it run like a business? When when I look at my balance sheet of, of the alternative world, it looks a hell of a lot better than the other world. Mm -hmm. it, and it would look real good if I could spin the 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 uh, I guess the, the non-cash, if I could say my real estate deals were 26 times the valuation that I paid, mm -hmm. well, it looked the same, but I actually have cash. I got, you know, I, I, don't, I had real, my first real estate deal probably spun off $800. It, it's $750 is, is the rent on that first deal I did, $750 every month. And it's paid $750 every month, except for three months. That $750 goes in to that account tax-free every single month. So, and, and when the, you sell it at a profit, all the gains yeah. go back in. It, the house actually went up double. Now, I, now, again, full transparency, that's the market value. When I sell it and the money hits the bank, then you can say, Keith, yeah. you're right. But look, I, I made, I don't know, two or three times, four or five times, I didn't even do the math. I, I won't sell it because it's, I, it literally pays. It's, it's crazy. And the cash is in there. So I can cash flow. Why would I sell those? In some assets, you want to sell, buy more, yeah. whatever. But... Um, and that's your, you know, your world. You're, you're more of an expert in, the, in that area than me. I mean, some assets appreciate, some are a hold, yeah. term holds. There's all kinds of creative things. But I, I, the traditional world just doesn't, um, it seems like it's not run like we, we would run a business. It just boggles my mind that they don't have a fiduciary duty. Like, you have a fiduciary duty to your clients. I have a fiduciary duty to my clients. Even to our, firm, like, our partners. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. To yeah. your partners, to the people to who the are investing in your projects. Yeah. And, like, it just boggles my mind that these people direct money 
um, and they don't have a fiduciary duty. It's it, it's it's unbelievable to me. And and, it, uh, or maybe it is. Maybe it's just that as long as that sticker says whatever it says that you put in there, I guess it's okay. If it goes up and down, it's okay. I just report it to you. Dude, it's it's, it's remarkable. Crazy. It's remarkable. But it's not so. good for you to be to live the lifestyle you so, want to live, though. So, so we know that that stuff doesn't work. I, I need to start sending some people your way. How do we? Um, what can we end up doing? Like, so you guys, obviously, you take on accounts. We do. Um, I'm sure when we publish this uh, this little chat over over coffee, uh, people are gonna reach out to you. So I'll, I'll share your contact information and everything too. Um, but like, you know what I really liked? You talked about it before. Like, and we partnered up on that on yeah. the on the children's side of things, right? Like, getting that rolling for your kids, and all of a sudden, your kid ends up being 20 years old, graduating from high school or college, and they're sitting on this chunk of change that they can then use to go and buy real estate, buy a business, invest in different types of things, and really start building their wealth, and they're learning it firsthand, you know? And and so I know that, that you guys have that account for the kids, and then you reach out to me, and we put a bunch of books together for... Well, you, you and your legacy wife, you have to talk about that. I don't know, yeah, that's yeah. a whole separate thing, but yeah, it was yeah. amazing. But Little Legacy Library contributed some books, and then you guys put packaging it all up and uh, making a big push on that. So I want to I make sure that people know that that even exists, that you guys can help direct that for them. You guys can help direct their own accounts. And um, uh, dude, we just gotta do, we gotta do more of this, right? Like we gotta just educate people more. They need to know what's, op what's out there because if they don't know what they don't know, how do they know to then even put money with, exactly. with Specialize and, or And we'll or get the, but we'll get you parents, we'll get you adults, that's easy, we're gonna get you. But the one thing that we always forget about is let's get that youth conversation. And I think we have a pretty sweet program where we made it uh, real advantageous where we don't even take much of it. It's kind of, I don't want to call it a loss leader because I hate that word, yeah. um, but it's it's pretty. And, and you know, we hope, and, and what we've seen is, is the parents, you know, open theirs and so, hey, you know, our goal is hopefully we can get, get the parent accounts, but we definitely get the youth. And then um, on the all minor accounts, and remember, minors can open up almost almost all the same accounts that an adult can. Yeah. And, and, and what we're gonna, we have a program that's coming that, um, it's out actually it's just literally we have to fine tune the uh, the the contract for it but it's uh basically i'm going to spend some time you know educating the parents on on kind of just some basic and look like for me it's really easy we talked about that we everything's super easy to us look this is not rocket science it'll take a moment the parents will be as much of an expert as they need to be on getting the kids at least with a foundation at least even if they wouldn't even do a deal they're in the top one percent Notice I said of adults. I didn't say 1% of kids. I don't even know what that is. It's, it's unheard of. Yeah. Like there are most adults that we come across don't have 100,000 in their Roth account. They do after they work with us and they get it going. I mean, and in, in, in start doing the investments and doing the alternative assets, they get there really quick. But to have a kid have anywhere remotely close to that by like age 18 to 20, it's, it's unheard awesome. of. It's awesome. And we can show how to do it without having to stress about even an investment. That's legacy, brother. I give your, uh, you know, what we're gonna do is I, we, bought it, we bought a good amount and um, we'll probably buy some more. And so what we're going to do to those that open it up too is we want to give a little gift for the kids uh, yeah. because the financial education is is really uh, needs improved. Yeah, you can't just do it for them, man. You got to no. teach them how to do the process while you're going well, along. We create, you know, Tim and I we're we're create, like, we're creating a new problem, and, and and you parents that are obviously taking the right step are going to create a new problem too. So the problem's never been that the kid almost has 100, 200k at 18, 21. Yeah. It's a new problem. So it, you know we can solve getting them to be the top one yeah. percent, but then we also need to remember. And we got a lot of time. I know my, my daughter's seven months old, so I got some time. It's going fast, by the way, but I got, I got not some... as much as you think, dude. Yeah, I'm no, telling no, you, man. I have a little time. My little girl's five already. I'm like, oh man. Yeah, to, to kind of, and you know what? And, and it really, it, it makes me, I think, a, a, a better business owner, a better entrepreneur, a better investor, because I'm, I'm spending some time thinking about what do I got to do to teach her? But actually, I'm, I'm getting some nuggets for myself. You're thinking more long term. Yeah, for sure. And it's helping me out. So, so, so we'll awesome, be... dude. Well, here's what we got to do because I think they're closing down. Yeah, we're, we're getting kicked, we're getting out. kicked <laughs> out of here. I'm, I'm looking at the, the hours up here. And they shut down 30 minutes ago. Oh, so did they really? They're being, they're being kind enough to let us hang oh, out. These, you guys are amazing. Um, we should at least buy a coffee to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, dude, uh, so here's what we're going to do. I want to make sure that everybody has your contact information. I'll make sure Thank that you. they they connect with you on this stuff. And um, like, dude, I mean, you got to go and open an account. Just go and like play around with it this year. Open up an IRA, put some money in a self-directed account, and then figure out little loans, little partnerships, um, it's all kinds of little, cool stuff little micro loans. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the other thing that we got to do is we got to create some sort of a forum so that way people can kind of connect with people who already have accounts. They can share 
that forum with their friends who do have 401ks, but they're not familiar with how to work this stuff and how to get educated. But uh, you guys have a lot of educational content out there, like we teaching do. people how to do this stuff. We do. We got you know we got we have a lot of educational product. We even got a lot of hand holding. We got some, we got you know some programs. If somebody is like, hey, you know what? Like I, I want a real regimented program where. You know, I, I want to be able to actually do this, and, yeah, yeah. and we, we do a lot of success. So we got a lot of options. We can talk to. You know, <laughs> They're officially kicking us out. We so. are out. <laughs> All right, dude. So, well, dude, I appreciate thank everything. You so much for me, Great Tim. to connect with you, man. Awesome. Always fun having you in town, and for I'll sure. see you up in Cleveland sometime soon. Yeah, I know. Back to the winter wonderland. Cheers, thank brother. You. Thank you. Hey, I hope you guys got a ton of value out of that. There's going to be a link below in the comments section on how you can connect with Keith on uh, opening up your own direct self-directed retirement account opening up one for your kids and getting things going for them um, as well as some new offerings and products and stuff that he's uh, he's bringing to the marketplace he's a good buddy of mine I've known him for many many years and uh, somebody that I have my accounts with as well so he's a great resource and their team is rock-solid they move quick they'll tell you what you can do what you can't do keep you inside the lines make sure that you're doing all the right things with your IRA services or your, or your 401k account and um, helping you self-direct it into some tangible assets that you can control for your legacy and for your wealth building so appreciate you love you be your best <laughs>